Hi, my name is Florian Roth and I'm the core developer of Tor, our APT scanner. I would like to give you a brief introduction to Tor, what it is, what it does and what its key functions are. The main reason for this webcast is to show you what Tor really is. Why it is different than other solutions like antivirus or network monitoring tools the typical use cases and how it should be used to detect attackers in your system environment. But let me begin with its origins. The idea of Tor was born in 2012 during the incident response in two APT cases in which we were involved in. I noticed that we had a lot of indicators derived from forensic analysis reports, but no idea if detected tools, backdoors, event log entries and manipulations were also present on other systems. The features of the used antivirus and security monitoring solutions did not satisfy our needs. We noticed that the attacker groups use tools that to classify as possible unwanted applications, or so-called PUAs. Password dumpers like Mimikatz by Benjamin Delphi were used to extract clear text credentials right from the memory. Web shells like this tiny ASP web shell established a foothold on web servers and are difficult to detect by antivirus engines or any sandbox solutions. We've also often found typical remote admin tools like PSExec placed in suspicious folders with suspicious ownerships renamed to suspicious names, but no tool to detect and report sus suspicious findings in a distributed sweep on all systems. Another good example is the so-called sticky key backdoor, which is a malware-less backdoor. Sticky Keys is a Windows accessibility tool that is available right in the logon screen. Attackers replaced it with a valid Windows command line executable. So the file name was still zhc.exe, but the content was that of a cmd.exe. When you log in via RDP to that system and press Shift five times in a row, you get a shell with local system rights. Newer versions of this backdoor don't replace the sticky key binary but register the Windows command line as a debugger for the sticky keys tool in order to run it right in the logon screen. This type of backdoor is easy to establish and use but difficult to detect by traditional methods. So what we needed was a flexible scanner that allowed us to perform distributed sweeps with our own signatures and indicators. Tor was born. Tor is a scanner for hacking tools, system manipulations and other traces of hacker activity. It is portable, so not another agent that has to be installed. It does not require any runtime environments like Java or .NET. It is adjustable to your needs. Customers can add their own indicators and signatures. It uses a scoring system to determine malicious or suspicious objects which allow it to detect unknown tools and malware. And Tor has several ways to export information. There is a text log file, an HTML report, or syslog messages to a central log server. And finally, but not least, uh, it allows to throttle the scan process in order to save system resources, which is very important in productive environments. People often ask us about the differences to antivirus solutions, and what we typically respond is, an antivirus detects malware, Tor detects hackers. Tor covers and extends the features of different security solutions. It detects certain types of malware, like an antivirus, but is specialized in remote access trojans, rats, hack tools and dual-use tools. In contrast to antivirus solutions, Tor does not have to be unambiguous in its detection. For Tor, it is a valid response to report an object as suspicious. It detects system manipulations like the replacement of system files and suspicious activity from the various event logs and caches. Tor reports on so-called indicators of compromise, detects dumps and tool outputs, traces in log files or even free disk space of a system partition. And it performs some few vulnerability checks on configurations or services that were often used by 
uh, the attacker groups that we have faced. There are three main use cases for Tor. The environment sweep, in which all systems in a network are scanned and report back to a central SIEM system like Splunk or ArcSight. The single system live forensic scan, that generates an easy to read HTML report. And the system image scan in a lab environment, which is best run on a mounted file system instead of an image file, in order to allow the evaluation of all the metadata attributes like file name, owner, and timestamps. Tor contains many different modules to analyze elements like system services, network connections, the Windows event log processes, registry caches, and so on. The main signature database contains a steadily increasing number of JARA rules, which is a flexible and extensible open signature format. We use our own indicators of compromise in an anonymized form, include indicators from public sources and provide tools to include indicators from private thread feeds like MISP or OTX. The scoring system is a central feature of Tor. Simple solutions check elements against a simple indicator database. Tor checks each element with a variety of different checks and evaluates a total score based on subscores for each attribute to detect unknown threats. But let me give you some examples. The diagram shows only some of the checks that Tor applies to each analyzed element. But it gives you an impression of the evaluation engine that works in the background. The first analyzed sample is a file named d.sys in the System32 folder. Tor cross-checks if this executable is registered as a service and adds a score of 10 if this is true. The file receives other scores for the file type, the suspicious name, the location and the file size. All this adds up to a notice message that informs us about a suspicious element. The second sample file is called temp.exe and is located in the Windows folder. You can see that it receives a negative score for the extension that matches the actual file type. If an executable is found that has a text file extension, it would receive a high score due to that simple cloaking attempt. The last sample is a Windows credential editor, which is a password dumper and pass the hash tool. A matching Jara rule increases the score by 70 and other attributes like the suspicious location further increases the score to an alert message. The scoring system is one of the unique features of Tor. It has often generated messages on yet unknown tools or backdoors. As I mentioned before, Tor makes extensive use of Jara, an open signature format. It is a very flexible format and easy to read and write. We use it for file registry and event log detection. The metadata section of each rule allows to define custom fields. We use that for our scoring system by the definition of a score for every rule. Tor adds up the scores of all triggered rules and generates a total score for each scanned element. It's a very powerful tool, especially when it comes to anomaly detection. One of the methods to detect anomalies is the cloaking check. Tor checks for differences between file extensions and the actual file type. We often see executables with non-executable extensions or RAR archives with changed file extensions. The main reasons why attackers love the RAR format is the strong encryption and the possibility to encrypt also the file names of the contained files. We use Jara to detect system file anomalies with a so-called negative matching. It checks a certain system file and generates a warning if specific strings have not been found in that well-known file. Tor does not know what the malicious replacement is, but reports that something is wrong with that file. But let's have a look at the different output types. 
This screenshot shows a command line output of Tor. You can easily spot the relevant information. The red colored alarm in the center shows a password dumper, GSEC dump, with a pretty high score. You see various hashes, the owner, size, type, and several timestamps. You can also see the first 50 bytes of a file in a hex encoded form, followed by all ASCII characters in that first 50 bytes. Below you find the reasons that led to the total score. Tor will only show the two top scoring reasons if you don't instruct him otherwise. This is an HTML report. You can see information about the scan in the upper left corner. It includes the Tor version, the command line arguments, the date of the signature database, start and end time and other useful information about the analyzed system. The center shows a linked list to each module report. On the right you see statistics about the scan. Below you find all alerts and warnings grouped in order to show you the most relevant findings first. Some of the report elements contain links for direct online lookups. You will see that this is quite useful. The HTML format is the preferred output format in cases in which you want to analyze a single or only a few systems. For a network-wide sweep of thousands of systems, you will probably want to use a different analysis method. Basically, you are free to choose any central monitoring system for the analysis of the Tor results. Tor is able to send syslog messages to multiple remote systems and even supports the common event log format CEPH for seamless integration into ArcSight systems. We provide a free app and add-on for Splunk with many dashboards and automatic field extractions. Within Splunk it's easy to search and filter log information from thousands of sending Tor instances. It, al it is also very easy to integrate log file output as it corresponds with the syslog format. Tor is a very flexible tool. You can distribute and run it using the preferred method in your organization. Some use their software distribution and management software like FCCM, others a set of batch or PowerShell scripts, but we recommend the execution from a file share. You can even run Tor via the UNC path without mounting a network drive. You can then schedule a task via group policy and collect the results in a central theme system. On remote locations or inaccessible DMC networks, you can run Tor locally and collect the text log files for a central analysis. But let me show you some more features that might suit you. DeepDive performs a surface scan on the whole partition in order to detect deleted tools or traces in the free space of a disk. I wouldn't recommend this for a distributed sweep as it is prone to false positives, but a perfect option for an in-deep analysis in the lab. The exit decompressor extracts samples in memory and scans them afterwards for better scan results. The ADS checks detect suspicious alternative data streams on NTFS volumes. The autoruns analysis makes use of sysinternal autoruns and processes the output of the command line client. Both autoruns and handle are tools that are not shipped with a Tor package. They have to be downloaded and placed in the tools folder in order to run due to the end user license restrictions. The shockwave decompressor extracts flash movies before the scan in order to massively improve the detection rate. This feature has been introduced during Operation Pornstorm, in which attackers used several different flash exploits in their spear phishing attacks. Tor also tries to detect golden tickets in many different ways. It detects them as files on disk, using JARA rules for the Kirby format and during LSA session analysis on domain controllers. Tor reviews the validity period of the K 
Kerberos tickets and reports unusual values. Tor also tries to detect the creation of a golden ticket in the Windows event log. Another option removes all personal information from the log lines. This often helps to mitigate concerns of data privacy officers or work councils. You can see that Tor replaced all user or owner values with a string anonymized by Tor. It even removed the profile directory names in order to suppress the username output. These are two examples for some of the vulnerability checks. The upper example shows the Tomcat user file analysis reporting weak user account credentials. The lower example shows a Kerberos vulnerability detected by an evaluation of the system uptime compared to the publication date of the critical patch. Let me say a few words about the resource utilization. The scan process of Thor is comparable to an antivirus. Due to the single-threaded architecture, Tor only works on a single CPU core. Runtimes range from 2 to 10 hours, depending on the system's resources, number of files and activated modules. The throttling of a scan process can be configured manually or automatically via the resource control parameter. We realized that the runtime of is less relevant than the system stability. It is simply not so important if a scan takes 1, 2 or 4 hours. What counts is the system load and safe operation. The resource control option activates the adaptive throttling and certain limits. Thor automatically adjusts some parameters after checking the system's hardware resources. It automatically reduces the scan speed on single core systems and deactivates some intensive checks on systems with less than 1024 megabytes of main memory. In resource control mode, Tor will exit when it detects a memory exhaustion. It will also count the bytes sent via syslog and reduces the output when a lot of data has been transmitted. Thor version 7 scanned over 20,000 different server systems and runs frequently on more than 10,000 servers and clients. It relies on readable access and never writes or deletes files. Every module and instruction gets handled internally. Tor may stumble, but it rarely falls. Tor touches a lot of different system elements, but stability always has top priority. And finally, a diagram that visualizes the synergetic effects of network and host-based APT detection. The upper half shows indicators that are best detected at the perimeter, and the lower half indicators detected by Tor. You notice, for example, command and control back connects attempts or network-based IOCs as the primary discipline of network appliances. And all types of system anomalies, traces of hacker activities, web shells and hack tools as the primary discipline of Thor. Thank you very much for your time and interest. In case of any questions, please don't hesitate to contact us via our websites or the email address info at aptdetection.com. Bye.